everyone, Diane here and welcome to my studio. Today I'm going to do a line and wash drawing and painting of um, some swallows on a sprig of apple blossom. I looked out of my bedroom window this morning and I noticed that the neighbour's apple tree was in flower and I thought that it would be lovely because on the other side of the house we've got loads of swallows nesting. And I remembered that um, over the years I have repeatedly done this painting <coughs> of uh, five swallows sitting on a twig and this was from a photograph in um, the uh, RSPB magazine years ago. They used to do absolutely fantastic photography in their magazine and they don't anymore which is a great shame but this was actually a photograph which I painted multiple times completely um, different every time. This is a line and wash here where I mostly did a pen, I did the pen work first and then I coloured it in. This one I drew the swallows and then I painted them and then I emphasised their shapes using a pen. This one they were all looking a little bit crazy, their hair standing up on end, that was a bit of a fun and funky one. This one I think might have been the very first one I did um, and that doesn't have any ink on it at all, that's just a painting. But they're all from the same original photograph, which I might even be able to find, actually. Um, because you might be interested to see this. This is my um, binder that um, when I first started to learn to paint birds, about 20 years ago now, I suppose, I collected all my RSPB magazines and took the best photos. Oh, look, ha, that is funny. It's right there on the front, in the front of the binder. This was the photo that I used all those years ago <coughs> to paint this painting that I was just showing you from. That's rather cool. I didn't realize it was right in the front. How about that? Anyway, so today I'm going to take that as my starting point and I'm, I think I'm just going to take two of them and I'm going to pop them onto a piece onto a piece of apple twig and we'll see how that goes. So uh, for my palette today um, I'm just going to use a couple of colours. I'm going to use my trusty Potter's Pink which needs a little bit of wetting down so that it will um, open up its beauty and this dark colour is indigo um, or it could just as easily be Payne's Grey if you don't have indigo. I think perhaps even Payne's Grey might be better. Um, looking for my indigo I'd have to get some, yeah, or you could use black. If you don't have Payne's Grey you can mix up a sort of dark indigo blue using black and um, phthalo blue if you've got phthalo blue or you could even do it with ultramarine and black if that's all you have. So that would be better than nothing. So just that one colour for that in different intensities. And um, the pink for the little bits of pink that they have underneath their beaks and so on. And for the flowers, we're going to do those mostly in, in pink and we'll probably want a bit of um, quinacridone gold which we'll mix with the blue to make the green. And yeah, that should set us off quite nicely. So I'll put those to one side for a minute and show you the beginning of my sketch in planning this painting. Yesterday I was doing geraniums in pen and ink and uh, you might recognize this sketch because I was practicing doing the geranium flowers like that on that side and then I went off and did the painting, the line and wash. But when I came to start to do this sketch just now I found that I had, if I turned it round, I could develop that and turn it into apple blossom. I'll obviously change the flowers a little bit. So I've just popped one um, swallow up there and I'm thinking I'll put another two down here. Now if you want this sketch um, it'll be available to download on dianeanton.com so you just need to dash over there when you've seen this video if you fancy having a go yourself and it's free to download. So I will be back in a second when I've drawn in those two birds. Now this is the original rough sketch that I did and there's all sorts of mistakes and things that need to be corrected on there 
but it's a loosening up exercise so when you do the first sketch you know don't worry about it if it all goes wrong it inevitably will but you've got to get started so that's my starting point and I'll put that to one side and now this is a uh, close-up photo of some apple blossom which I just printed out so that I could look at the de in detail of what it actually looks like and you can see we've got uh, five petals there white petals the buds are pink the petals gradually lose their pinkness as the flower opens and so you can see these ones are half open and that's got a little bit of pink on it and this one is uh, almost all entirely white and then it has little um, uh, stamens and anthers in the center here which are uh, yellow ye little yellow dots so we'll just indicate those things um, and we've got um, these leaves which have got a yellowish tinge to them but they're basically on the green side and they've got a serrated edge so they're kind of oval with a serrated edge so just a basic tree leaf really but so there we are there's that now I've done the um, sketch in pencil um, so we've got one bird here another one here and another one there I've chosen my three favorites from this original painting um, from the original photo kind of chain of events here anyway so now I'm going to sit down and I'm going to ink this in doing the line first this is a Stettler pigment liner this is a 0.3 millimeter um, nib and uh, if you're doing true line and wash really you should do the lines first and then you color in afterwards you can always come back in with some extra lines but essentially as somebody pointed out um, in the comments to the other day's video it does give you a bit more structure if you start off with a drawing and then you're kind of a little bit more supported as you go in later with the um, with the paint so anyway these swallows are a little bit caricature -y. they're kind of they always were in my view a sort of cartoon type um, version of swallows and I'm I'm not going to say in any way shape or form that they could be considered to be ornithologically correct but they sort of give you the impression of a swallow so I'm just going to get my original photo out so that I can um, refer to that as I go along oh rain stopped that's good Time's in. you should go out and do the garden now <laughs> it might not rain for five seconds what do you think okay so the the swallow chicks have got kind of the dark area on the top and then a light tummy but I'm not going to try to indicate that using the, um, the pen I'm just going to use the pen for um, outlining and for doing things like the beak and the eyes and the little legs and things so but it's up to you when you come to do this if you uh, want to color it in with the pen then that's obviously fine when I do ink work, I use broken line technique using a, a sketchy approach. I don't draw solid lines in the illustrative kind of way. I prefer my sketch to be quite loose and free. Um, but that again is up to you. I think I said that before and I'll probably say it again. I uh, hope you're not bored already. Certain limit to the number of things that you can think of to say when you're doing a video don't you before you start moaning on about what a horrible day you've had and then uh, start to bore everybody to tears as they watch you create your latest masterpiece or not as the case may be i had an event yesterday i have to tell you about this i uh, you know if you've been watching me for the last few months that we have sheep and we have lambs and in order to get lambs from the sheep you have to have a ram and uh, we unfortunately do have a ram and yesterday I went in to say hi to the lambs with the ram in situ and he decided he didn't like the look of me and he butted me and he caught my hand so I now have a lovely big swelling on the back of my hand serves me right it's entirely my own fault I should never have gone in there with him but uh, he might find that he um, you might not be uh, needed for lambs next year um, we might manage without him I think we've got enough with like 15 sheep or something all of a sudden and no grass ha. there we go 
Anyway, so here I'm doing a stamen with an anther. I hope I've got that right. I can't look it up while I'm doing it. I always forget these biological words. But I did remember the name of my teacher. My biology teacher was Miss Griffiths. I remembered that yesterday. I didn't remember it. I looked it up. Um, but I feel happier now I know that. So we're just working in with these outlines to the flowers, doing the petals in a fairly free sort of way. And I'm hoping that when we put the colour in, it will bring the whole thing to life. Hopefully. Make sure if you do do this with pen um, that you use one that's waterproof. You don't want to use just any old felt tip pen that's um, going to run and spoil everything. So just make sure it's a, a um, waterproof pen of some sort. I did wonder about using Indian ink or one of the bottled inks with a dip pen. And that would be nice because that would give you a lot more erratic, um, varied lines. But um, I decided that this would probably be... I've already put one video up today, so this is the second one today. Uh, the, um, the figures in the Monet painting that were missing because my camera stopped working. I finally did a second version of that. So that's up now. And uh, some of you might be interested in having a look at that if you liked the Monet. That was a bit specialised and not really a sort of Insta-worthy type of image. Um, we all have to think about Instagram when we choose what we what we paint for YouTube. It's all one great big network of social media and they all have their requirements, don't they? None of which I claim to understand at all. Uh, luckily I do have a daughter who has some understanding. It's not easy though. It's not easy at all, as you all, no doubt, perfectly well know. And I'm sure all of you are much better at social media than I am. Could hardly be worse. Okay, so we're just coming up to the end of the third chick here. My neighbour told me that she's already got some... Um, no, he said that he'd already got chaffin chaffinches fledging, which is really quite nice and a bit early and it's absolutely freezing cold here at the moment for May so I'm surprised about that. Now the question is do you think that we've got enough flowers there? Um, what have we got? A big one there and then a little cluster of three, a cluster of two and I'm sort of thinking maybe I'll just put a bud or something here. Let me find my reference material and i tell you what we'll put a little cluster of bud-like creatures here and maybe another one here, a sort of half open flower. I don't think we're going to get any apples this year. The weather's just shocking. They say it's raining in Spain as well, I heard today. Raining every day, that's not normal for May. Right then, so there we are, that is the drawing done and I'm just going to put you on hold for a minute while we go and take a photograph of that, so don't go away. Okay, so I'm going to have a quick look at my colours at the moment, just to explain to you that there are different options, again sorry about the rain, um, if you have ultramarine and black you can mix those two colours together and you will come up with a reasonable uh, dark grey blue colour which would be absolutely fine for the swallow's backs. That's a really good option. So I may even use that myself. That is definitely a one way to go because the reason being why I might choose this is because then when it comes to doing the leaves I can use the same ultramarine blue and mix it with quinacridone gold or any other yellow. That's quinacridone gold which gives a soft green or I might decide to use um, the ultramarine with lemon yellow and that gives a much more 
uh, well, a different green altogether. You can see the two there side by side. That's with quinacridone gold, soft green, and this is with lemon yellow, a much more um, vibrant green, depending on how much yellow you put into it, of course. I, I personally quite like the quinacridone because it's less dangerous, it tends not to go wrong, so either of those would work. Um, another, don't use, probably best not to use cadmium yellow because that tends to be a bit, a bit um, opaque. Um, and then the other way of mixing the grey is to use Payne's grey for the back of the bird. Um, Payne's grey varies a lot depending on what brand you've got. This one I've got here is an old Holland and as you can see there's already quite a lot of blue in Payne's grey so you could really just use the Payne's grey for the backs of the birds if you've got Payne's grey. You don't need anything else. And then to mix your yellow you can, sorry, to mix your green you can take some yellow and you can mix that with Payne's grey and that gives you quite a decent green. So that would do for the leaves. So there you are, that's the options. If You can go Payne's grey and lemon yellow or ultramarine blue, a little bit of black and either lemon yellow or quinacridone gold. And um, uh, for the little pink area under their chin, I think Potter's pink can't be beaten for that. So that's what that, that's what that looks like. But if you don't have that, don't panic. Don't panic, Mr. Mannering. Um, just use uh, permanent rose, quinacridone rose. Um, what's the other? Uh, opera, opera pink. That would do. Um, any of those things. And if you want to dull that down a little bit, um, put a bit of black or neutral tint, or um, if you've got it you could use um, a little bit of Naples yellow but a little bit of black in opera or permanent rose or whatever will give you more of a subtle pink just takes the edge off of it it's like putting sugar in your tea just takes off that uh, sharpness right then so that's me playing with colour for the minute put that aside so we go back now to the drawing which we're going to basically colour in. First thing you might want to think about is whether or not you're going to do any kind of background and I often when I painted this thing I don't know how many times and sometimes I did backgrounds and sometimes I didn't um, depending on how brave I was feeling. If you're feeling I don't know why would you be afraid of a background eh? Come on girls, um, so I'm going to wet the back part of the paper behind the birds, just wet it with clean water, always a good idea to use clean water, whatever you're doing isn't it, you know, bathing the baby, washing your hair, you wouldn't want to use dirty water for that, so why would you paint with dirty water? So there we are, that's all damp, and then the question is what am I going to put behind? Well. This is where we're going to have to bring in another colour and my favourite is cobalt blue just because it looks like the sky and you can easily just drop that in um, because you've wet the paper it will tend to run into place it won't go over the birds because you haven't wet the birds and just pick up a little bit of cobalt blue, mush it around on your china palette a little bit and then just drop it in in a kind of lackadaisical, laissez-faire kind of way. And uh, we'll put it underneath as well. And then once you've gone all around, don't overdo it, use very little amount of cobalt blue because it's very expensive paint and you don't want to waste it. No, just kidding, use as much as you like but you don't need to use very much just to get a nice effect. Make it darker on one side than the other. Good idea to make it darker here where you've got the most important flower 
a bit lighter over here where we've got the two birds so we don't want to compete with the birds and uh, so yeah there we are so we'll let that dry and uh, I'll be back in a minute okay so now the background is dry dry enough anyway so that uh, when we paint the birds um, nothing's going to run out into the sky so I'm just going to pick up a little bit of um, Potter's Pink and I'm just going to um, just pop in a little bit of pink underneath uh, the, the beak of each of these birds where they have um, a little bit of, of that colour and then having dropped that in I'm just going to soften it away uh, with the brush using the um, lost and found soft edges like that so we just have a kind of indication it doesn't have to be detailed in any way and then I'm going to I think I'm going to use my Payne's Grey for this because I think this is a really nice shade of Payne's Grey at least I hope that's what I've got in this pot <laughs> might turn out it's something completely different but no I don't think it is pretty sure this is Payne's Grey um, just try it out yes looks good and I haven't wet the birds they're not wet I'm just going to be painting um, wet on dry here so just just pop the, the color in and because this is uh, line and wash we don't want to make the paint side of it too too heavy okay so the idea is to just um, add to the effect of the lines that you put in with your pen and so when you use the brush on the side a little bit like this that's called dry brush technique and it gives you a broken uh, effect so it's not um, not a solid color not a solid uh, mass of blue so we just dry brush that a little bit and then and wash out the brush and then just pick up some of that and let that kind of pull around into the tummy of the bird a little bit just kind of soften that up a bit to give him some volume and if you want to um, add color to his uh, legs they actually swallows have black and white really so you don't really want to add much but you might want to just emphasize parts of the legs and something that's a neat kind of trick sometimes looks quite good is if you just touch the paint into the wet area just above you'll get a kind of bleed so that just gives you a little bit of extra connection there but you don't want too much of that because this is quite a delicate little painting now when this is dry we might come back in and reinforce some of the lines put some more lines in there um, just to give it a bit more shape maybe we might uh, emphasize his mouth and his beak a little bit but otherwise he's looking pretty good and so a little bit more of the same color for this one here and uh, looking at my original which is that one he's he's got a lot of blue down the front here so I'll just indicate that like that and then I'm going to add a bit more on one side make him a little bit darker on one side like that and a little bit darker here so that this flower can show up against him and then wash that out a little bit and come back in behind that flower there a bit of shadow soften some of these edges a little bit not all of them but some of them might just lift that color there a little bit that's another thing that you can do if you want to just give a little bit of reflection on the top there so see how that dries out and then the last one this little chap on the end you just drop the paint in like that don't fuss over it just drop it in he's got paint down to his middle of his chest so we put it behind that flower there too which is great and then look a little bit out here this is where having a nice sharp brush helps and uh, he's got a tail sticking out there as well 
Okay, and uh, just here he's got a little bit of colour. There we are, and uh, yeah, just make their legs a tiny bit more noticeable like that. Okay, so while they are quietly drying, we will do the leaves, I think, and I'm going to stick with my tried and tested favourite Pinacridone Gold, and I'm going to drop in as the under colour a wash of Quinacridone, and then I'm going to go in with blue and hope that we get something approaching green. It's a very soft green. And we want to we want to vary the green a lot. We don't want the same colour for every leaf. And we'll keep them quite light because venom wash is really it's exactly what it is, isn't it? It's wash. Just a little wash. So these ones over here I'm going to do with a little bit of lemon yellow. A little bit of blue. So we are. And now the flowers. So we have to go with the, um, the same pink really to keep it harmonious. So I'm looking at my original photo here. Pink on the buds, a little bit of pink on the edges of the half open flowers and really the fully open ones are actually blue, aren't they, where the shadow is. So this is half open, this one here, so we'll just paint That and a little bit of pink on the inside and on the outside there. Um, ta -dum, ta -dum, ta -dum. Oh, these were the buds, so they're going to be pink. And maybe a little bit of a little bit on the tips of those and then I'm going to come in with some cobalt for the very the shadows on the inside because in order to make something look white it's got to have shadow on it somewhere hasn't it anyway, so that will do for that and when that's dry I can put some yellow in the middle for the center of the flowers this one here, we'll put some blue in the middle there and a little pink over here. This one I'm going to do on the pink side, there we are. And this one too. And if you do pick it up and it's too dark, just go back in with some more water, like just like that. Let's go in with some more water and lift it out. It doesn't have to stay there because you put it there. It can come away. There we are. And looking at this, I think I don't care whether they should be completely white, but that is definitely going to have some a little bit more pink on it. Okay, so the last painting part that needs to be done is going to be the twig. And we're not going to use a horrible, nasty brown colour there. We're just going to use a, a kind of soft grey. And just come in with our artistic licence functioning. Have you got an artistic licence? If you haven't, you should apply for one now. Then you can do whatever you like. Okay, so there we are. Um, just wondering whether I need to do any touch-ups with the pen 
on the birds. Um, this is where you can play around with their eyes if you didn't sketch them in quite darkly enough in the first place. You can add a little bit of character to the birdies just by darkening darkening the eye maybe making it a little bit bigger and then um, I'm looking at my photo the original photo they, they sort of have kind of a few speckles here like freckles bane of my life a freckly person but I don't suppose the sparrows the uh, swallows care so we just put some freckles in there and then here they definitely have uh, some lines where their wings begin so we can do that and back here and maybe emphasize some of the lines around the body shape and on the going back to the eye actually they tend to have a bit of a circle around but don't mess with that too much because it can spoil the whole effect this one here has got some feather parallel feather lines there. This one, I think I'm going to give him a few dots over here and a few dashes just to be keep him in fashion. And if you do, by any remote chance, um, go a little bit too far with your uh, dark around the eye, as I think I slightly have here, get yourself a white pen and restore the lights. Okay, I don't think I'm going to fuss with any of the other parts of the composition right now. It needs to dry and uh, then you know you can come in for the very last few touches if you feel that way inclined. I did say that we would put some yellow in the centres of the flowers which are open and looking at my, um, my original it looks to me like a combination of lemon yellow and anacrodone gold would do fine for that so we don't want to make them too bright so we just pop in a little bit of yellow in the centre there in some of them. So there we are. Could do more, could do better, could do less, could do worse. So there's the final painting. Hope you enjoyed that. Here comes the rain again. Um, if you haven't already subscribed, please do and turn on notifications. It's very helpful for us. Don't forget to go to dianeanton.com to download your sketch if you want to give yourself a head start on painting this picture. And um, yeah, if you give me a like, I'd appreciate it. And I love to read your comments. So if you feel like making a comment, I would be really, really chuffed to wake up in the morning and see loads of lovely comments from all my friends out there in internet land. So I'll say bye bye for now and uh, enjoy painting this and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye everyone, bye bye. <laughs>